Hello there. My name is Martin and I'm an education support manager here at ACCA. Following the introduction of pre-scene material to the SBL exam in September 2023, the aim of this video is to provide a practical demonstration of how to analyze and make sense of the pre-scene information provided for the SBL exam. After watching this video, you should have a clear understanding of how to use the pre-scene information as well as the pitfalls to avoid during exam preparation and on the actual exam day. Listen in. My name is Sean Purcell and I work with the ACCA as their expert tutor for ACCA SBL. In this review, I'll talk about the best way to use the pre-scene material when it's released. With reference to guidance provided by ACCA, I'll take you through a suggested approach using the published September 2023 pre-scene material, the exam and the associated examiner's report. So let's first begin by how to analyse the pre-scene material. And provision of pre-scene material allows you to familiarise yourself with the organisation, the nature of the industry described and any industry specific terminology used prior to your exam. Once you've downloaded the pre-scene, a suggested starting point would be to take time to conduct strategic analysis using models such as PESTEL, such as SWOT and such as Five Forces Analysis or any other model which you're familiar with. Having done this, it should be easy for you to contextualize any exhibit and extra information that you'll be given in your exam. In September 2023, the pre-scene information was given about a low-cost airline, Corjets. As a low-cost airline, Corjets was following a strategy of what Michael Porter would describe as cost leadership. Although there's no marks for quoting theory in your SBL exam, you may find it useful as a framework and as a catalyst to help you with your analysis. And the competitive advantage gained from following a cost leadership strategy would be that Corjets should always be able to win a price war as it operates at the lowest cost in its industry. And it would be a popular airline with customers who were price conscious. However, to maintain competitive advantage as a cost leader, they'd have to continually reinvest in the most efficient technology and processes so as to maintain their competitive advantage. This is also likely to prove costly and in order for it to be successful, it would need to spread the costs over a large number of passengers so that economies of scale can be maintained. The main costs for a business such as Corjets are likely to include the cost of aircraft, the costs of fuel, staff costs, and the costs of taking off and landing at airports. You might want to consider what you could do to make these costs as low as possible and therefore maintain cost leadership. So let's have a look at these costs further. Start by looking at aircraft and think about the costs associated with aircrafts. For example, what would be the pros and cons of buying old aircraft in an attempt to keep costs down versus buying modern efficient aircraft? If we looked at fuel, this is a commodity product over which we have very little control, but which is also very vulnerable to large swings in prices. And one way we could minimize exposure to such swings in prices could be to hedge our fuel costs. With regards to staff, we may explore opportunities to employ crews from lower wage economies in an attempt to reduce costs. With regards to airport costs, we could also explore opportunities to take off and land flights, which would have lower charges. In addition, the low cost airline industry have led to the abolition of paper tickets, which has provided a large cost saving, as well as the introduction of check-in luggage for a fee. 
you should also be aware that any threat to airline ticket sales such as flight restrictions imposed during the pandemic could be a disaster for a cost leadership strategy as revenues wouldn't be able to keep up with the high costs. Another drawback of being a cost leader would be that some people may perceive your product to be of low quality as a result of you selling it at a much reduced price as some people associate low quality with low price. Incorrectly, I might add. So just to summarize what I've done here is not to use information as a signal to go and review the annual reports of all the low cost airlines out there like Ryanair, like Southwest Airlines, etc. And instead, I've carefully considered the business model under which the organization is operating and what could impact on the future success of this strategy. We should also maybe consider potential future strategies. For example, if they were to maybe expand and purchase potentially an airline which offers first class and full service, or what if they purchased another low cost airline? For whatever option I look at, I'd consider the suitability, the acceptability and the feasibility of an expansion option in line with the business model which the organization is operating. If we were to investigate other information given in the pre-scene, we see reference to point to point versus hub and spoke. And if you're not familiar with that terminology used in the pre-scene, it would be worth exploring exactly what is meant by it. Essentially, these terms are used in the airline industry referring to how flights are organized. The pre-scene did provide some information as to what was meant by this terminology and further investigation would reveal that hub and spoke businesses tend to be practiced by full service airlines with point to point being more popular with low cost airlines. The pre-scene also indicated the history of core jets, which began 20 years ago by two entrepreneurial brothers. However, it mentioned they retired 10 years ago and since then Core Jets has been listed on the stock market with most of its shares owned by large financial institutions. The revelation of that information also indicates that Core Jets is likely to have gone through structural and cultural changes. As a result, it makes me think that a company listed on the stock exchange needs to make sure it's got sound corporate governance in place so that there are no issues with regards to agency issues and I'm going to make sure I'm fully conversant with the best practice in this area. The pre-scene also provided us with a board structure where there are non-executive directors dominating the board and that's a sign of good governance. The pre-scene provided information on risk management and key risk issues faced by core jets specifically mentioning safety and security of customers and staff, climate change, macroeconomic and geopolitical events, and security of the website and the systems. So again, this is going to alert me to appreciate the typical risks faced by an airline in these areas and the typical actions one could take to mitigate exposure to these risks. There's also no mention about a risk committee and we should appreciate the benefits that come from having more responsibility. Information with regards to extracts from their website is also provided. And here they talk about the mission statement and the values of core jets. I'd be especially aware of the values because in the actual exam, we'd need to make sure that any options we were suggesting were in no way going to conflict with the very clearly stated values on commitment to safety, building customer trust, driving innovation, putting people first and sustainable behavior. I'd also be thinking about KPIs, which would be appropriate to these. And so I could check whether the values were in fact being achieved. And then finally, we're provided with information on financial performance, punctuality, customer satisfaction and costs breakdown. I'd suggest a review of these to see if there are any anomalies. And you can also see the cost breakdown confirms what are Corjet's main costs. 
So that concludes my summary of the information in the pre-seen material and an explanation of the typical evaluation I would expect you to make of similar pre-seen materials going forward. The true test though is how can this evaluation help us deliver better answers in the real exam? Well, the first benefit is we don't have to deal with so much information on the day of the exam as we did in previous exam incarnations as the pre-seen has provided us with much information that we need to help us and understand the organisational background and its business model. Let's now have a look at what the actual exam looks like and how scrutiny of all of the pre-seen information will help you to deliver a good answer in your exam. To do this, we're going to look at sample questions which were provided in the examiner's report for the September 2023 exam. So on the day of the exam, students were given four exhibits. The first exhibit was an interview with the CEO of Courgettes, highlighting what her priorities were and what issues she had to overcome as a CEO, inheriting a business previously run by entrepreneurial brothers. The second exhibit provided an overview of a proposal making an investment in artificial intelligence to deliver pilot training, giving some brief information on finance and a summation of the features and issues with artificial intelligence. The exhibit three gave a comprehensive risk review of the risks that were mentioned in the pre-seen material, going into more detail, explaining them and the causes of them. And then finally, exhibit four gave a summary of financial results, KPIs, and an extract from an environmental and sustainability dashboard. In the September 2023 sample exam, task one consisted of two main tasks. And the first task required us to outline the problems caused by the previous leadership style and the impact the current CEO leadership style has had on Courgettes' culture. The precinct mentioned Courgettes originally was founded by two entrepreneurs with their own entrepreneurial management style, but they'd since retired and the company had floated on the stock exchange. This coupled with the information given in the new exhibit in the exam would have assisted you in scoring well in this question. The second part of task one asked us to prepare presentational slides explaining the role of Courgettes' non-executive directors and the importance of having a diverse board. Again, taking hints and leads from the pre-seen information where it was suggested you needed to make sure that you're fully conversant with board structure and corporate governance when a company's listed on the stock exchange should have prepared you well to answer this latter part of the question. Task two was again split into two parts. Part A asked us to prepare a report assessing the suitability, feasibility and acceptability of a proposal to invest in artificial intelligence. There wasn't really any reference to this in the pre-seen material other than a mention that Courgettes was an early adopter of the latest technologies. All information relating to AI was provided by the exhibit given on the day of the exam. And this shows that SBL will still require you to demonstrate you can think on your feet using information provided to you on exam day. The second part of task two asks you to draft an email discussing the nature of Courgettes risks and to assess the consequences each of these risks for Courgettes. Again, because we are paid attention to risk and thought about these risks in the context of the airline industry, as a result of it being brought to our attention in the pre-seen material, our ability to deal with questions in this area in the context of task two requirements should have been greatly improved. Finally, task three was again broken into two parts with the first part asking you to assess the performance in the last financial year. The pre scene provided much of the airline's specific KPIs, so at least you would have had the opportunity to familiarise yourself with them prior to the exam, 
Also, the headline results and the cost breakdown in the last page of the pre-scene would have helped you understand the data given in the exhibit. However, to answer this question well required you to do more than simply working the numbers provided. And you would have had to have used the specific data provided in the exhibit to generate answer points with anything relevant for pre-seen to help you in addition. It's interesting here to look at the examiner's report where it was mentioned that students were not developing their answers enough in this way and many just simply worked the figures for which very few marks were awarded. The second part of task three asked about the typical content one should have in an annual environmental and sustainability report. Here again, our attention was drawn to this area in the pre-seen material as the pre-seen material talked about sustainable behavior being a key value. And whilst reviewing pre-seen, we considered KPIs for all of the values and not just sustainability. So doing this should have prepared us well to answer this question. So in summary, when reading through the pre-scene, you need to carefully examine what's been said, what business model has been operated, so as to appreciate the dynamics facing the organization and the challenges and issues needing to be addressed so that the organization can maintain or improve its competitive advantage. You should note, we didn't hone in on specific issues or try to question spot. The whole point of the pre scene material is to be used as reference material, which enables you to become familiar with the organization, the industry in which they operate, to fully consider issues faced by the organization together with any challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. If you are about to sit the SBL exam, it's strongly advised you adopt a similar forensic approach in the same way I've demonstrated to you here. So as a final summation, let's recap. Download the pre-seen information as soon as it becomes available. This will be two weeks before the exam date. Conduct a strategic analysis using a model which you are familiar with to better understand the organization, the industry and the potential strategic issues the organization is facing. Take time to familiarize yourself with terminology relevant to the industry as this will enhance your level of understanding. Conduct a review of any financial information provided to help you better understand the performance of the organization. And finally, take time to fully digest and assimilate the information provided to you. You should ensure you have sufficient time in your study plan to do this. And reading the pre-scene only a day or two before your exam is not advisable. So there's the summary of the key takeaways I'd like to make sure that you do. It leaves me to say thank you very much for listening. I wish you all the very best and of luck in your future SBL studies. Take on board the information discussed about the pre-scene and you should have no problem.